Hi, I'm Danielle Hartman, and welcome to Poured in PA, a series sharing the stories of Pennsylvania's craft beer industry and history. Gettysburg is most well known for the Civil War's bloodiest battle. Over the first three days in July of 1863, the North and South engaged in a fight that changed the course of our nation. Today, visitors to the area can immerse themselves in the history both on and off the battlefields. Battlefield Brew Works and Spirits is a working brewery and distillery housed in a barn that served as a Confederate field hospital. We're at Battlefield Brew Works and Spirits of Gettysburg Distillery. We are about two miles from the circle in Gettysburg. In 1863, there was a three-day battle that was fought in and around Gettysburg. Besides being a Pennsylvania Dutch brick and barn, uh, this got to be one of the largest Confederate field hospitals after the battle, and it's one of the best documented. Over 1,600 were here, and uh, I think it's over 450 were left when the uh, Confederates were treated. So the people who had the farmhouse wrote a very long letter uh, right after the battle. The family's letter says there was a pile of arms and legs higher than your head outside the kitchen door. The real fortunate thing was that the Baltimore paper came up and inventoried the hospital so and published the inventory. So we actually know the names and units of everyone who was here and whether their left or right arm was amputated. The surgeon occupied the farmhouse. We tell people that soldiers never spent very much time in there. The surgeon and his staff were taking care of the people who came in. We assume that this was really a giant recovery room in a hay barn. Pennsylvania Dutch Brick and Barn, there aren't very many that are standing, and it is four courses deep in all the walls, and based on the post-COVID cost of brick, um, there will not be anyone constructing barns with four courses of brick in them. So the building was available. The, the people who had it ahead of me were a construction company, and they were really just using the barn as a storage thing. You didn't have to open the doors to walk in. We did a lot of work, obviously. Barns don't come with electric or water, sewer, so we did end up having to do a fair amount of adaptive reuse. If you restore a barn, you have a barn. So adaptive reuse is what you really have to do to, to find a new way to utilize the property. I chose to live in Gettysburg, you know, on purpose. I was retiring from the Army. I arranged my house here before I went to Austria on a Fulbright. And when I came back, I had two kids in diapers. And so my children were raised in Gettysburg. And what we tell people is that it's a, it's a small town, so you have that wonderful small town atmosphere. But the 1.8 million visitors a year means that you can do reasonable commerce. I moved here about two years ago, and Paul is my uncle, so I got the job that way. I really enjoy it, and I like to meet all the people that come in and out. Yeah, we get a lot of different types of people, I would say. We get a lot of tourists, so it just really depends. But we get like bikers, we have people that like live here, so it's cool to meet people from kind of everywhere. A lot of people are very interested in the history because Gettysburg is like known for the Civil War and the fact that it was a field hospital at one point. A lot of people are very interested in that because it's interesting, it's an old building you can tell when you walk in. So a lot of people definitely are interested in the history and then people, you know, love alcohol, so they're very interested in that too. Tourists are obviously part of the lifeblood of Gettysburg, so this is an opportunity for them to see a, the inside of a Civil War hospital and get a beer at the same time. We do harvest host. We have campers who are self-contained who can spend one night in the parking lot, and they're very enthusiastic because they, they're attracted to the beer and the distillery and the historic site. You kind of get everything. We do have local people that, you know, obviously we rely on, particularly in the sparse months. And then we get groups. Different groups can have us close and just have the whole facility to themselves. So we make all our own beers and spirits here. So we have like a wide variety of different beers that change out all the time. And we have like our spirits with the mixed drinks that we make here. The sodas that we make here are really good as well. 
the distilled side, the vodka is the one that has won four international medals in competition. It's really good. I have a doctorate in biological chemistry. I did medical research before I retired, and what we used to do when we were doing vaccine work was we would grow organisms, we would save the solids and throw the liquid away. Now we do just the opposite. We save the liquid and throw the solids away, but basically same process. In this operation, I have not been the brewer. I've stayed over on the distilled side. I always appreciate when they brew an IPA because that's my go-to beer choice. A lot of people really like IPAs, and then we got a lot of people, we have both lights and darks, so we have IPAs and we have stouts. So I think I see more people that like IPAs, but then there's also a good variety of people who like the stouts as well. But we have like different beers like all the time. They switch them out a lot. We have like a beer list, so I just go over all the beers and I let people sample because I feel like that's the fun part. Battlefield Brewworks and Spirits is a fitting name for this watering hole, not just for the great whiskey, rum, gin, and vodkas that it produces, but for some of its bar regulars that like to hang around. I would much rather have you come for beer and spirits, the other kind of spirits. And, and when we had the name Spirits of Gettysburg Distillery, obviously it is a, a slight play on two kinds of spirits. I'm not a ghost guy, but I think we certainly have that presence here. I feel like we have a great relationship with it. We save their building. We don't poke them or prod them. We, you know, we're respectful. I do lose a drink every now and then because it flies off the table. Other than that, we don't, <laughs> we don't dwell on, on that side. I definitely was a believer for the paranormal beforehand, but I feel like in a way here, it's a little bit more, not in your face, but it definitely, if you give it attention, it'll give you attention. The first story I really remember that stuck with me, like when I was waitressing here, you know, sometimes you deal with like mean customers. It just happens, it's part of the service industry and it doesn't happen often here. But I went to the bathroom to kind of like calm myself down a little bit and I was like crying and the, the women's restroom is most known for like being haunted. And I was coming out of the stall kind of like wiping my tears and the paper towel dispenser went off. Like he was kind of like, oh, wipe your tears, kind of something, something like that. That's how I like to take it. So that was probably the first thing that happened here that I was like, okay, that's cool. So 17 people died here and they were all buried on the property and then exhumed later on. We have like a shed back there. So I think that's the area they were buried in. I would say we have like a good relationship with the spirits here, but this was a Confederate field hospital. And when I first started working here, it was just, you know, it, it doesn't feel right in a way, I guess is what to say. So I was kind of egging them on, I guess a little bit. And then me and my coworker, we were like walking around and talking and in the women's restroom, I started to feel something on my back. So I showed her my back and you could see scratches. But that was the only bad experience that was also on me. And regardless of the history, like it's still very sad what happened to them. They were young and had to fight in this war and they all got their life taken very abruptly. So I would say I don't feel scared anymore. I mean, sometimes you get that uneasy feeling, but again, I'm, I'm here by myself closing up and it's dark. But I would say there is a good relationship between them and I after that one incident. I've kind of tried to respect them and they respect me too. I think like when I start to feel like a little creeped out or I hear noises, I'll be like, can you stop please? And they will. I mean, I talk to them all the time. Like I look like I'm schizophrenic. I feel like I'll just be sitting here by myself talking, but I feel like I want them to feel comfortable with me and I want the same thing with them. Cause like this was their space before. I'm just here, this is their home. So I really want them to like know that I'm not a threat, I guess. Cause I mean, if they wanted to mess me up, they probably could. Around Christmas time, I was here. I was here Christmas Eve by myself. And I'm here by myself most of the time, especially closing at night. So I was here by myself and I started to hear like whistling. And it was very clear, like it wasn't from like the TV or anything like that. And it was like the, the Christmas tree song. And that song dates back to like the 1600s. So I feel like that was something they listened to back then. 
and we had another couple come in who's a regular that come here and they've had their own experiences as well. I just told them I was hearing whistling, it was really weird and I went to the bathroom and I came back and they were like, we heard the whistling, like the Christmas tree song. So they had heard the same exact thing. I didn't even tell them what it was. So that was like, it's like creepy and cool at the same time. Even recently, there's been, I feel like a lot more activity we have a lot of people who do know that it's haunted, so they'll bring in their own ghost equipment, so like spirit boxes, cat lights, stuff like that. And we had like a couple come in, and this really stuck out to me. They brought the spirit box out and they were asking questions, and we were getting some answers that I feel like, you know, were legit. But it's just stuff like that I'm like a little skeptical of, even though I know it's haunted here. But we were like, can you show us that you're actually here? So. It said in the spirit box, sit down and watch this. And I have a video of this part. It started messing with, we have like fairy lights and like lights over there. It started like turning the lights on and off and the fairy lights on and off. And I've yeah been here a long time. I've never seen it do that before. So that was something that happened just last week that was really cool in July, because that was around the time of the war. It gets definitely more heavy here. And Paul mentioned earlier seeing glasses fly off the table. I've seen that happen plenty of times. And when people do bring in a lot of like their own equipment, the ghost will definitely ask for a beer, which is really interesting. So when somebody brought that spirit box, they were like, do you want anything to drink? And they said beer. So I poured them a beer and then they said perfect. So I thought that was really cool too. Well, that's all the time we have this week. I gotta go.